I'm going to start with the silicon primer. It's really good for resurfacing skin. So I'm just going to apply a small amount all over Savannah's skin. And this really helps to kind of fill in any pores, any dryness of the skin. And it also gives a really good slip for foundation. Again, you don't want too much on. Um, with makeup, thin layers are always the way to go. So that's kind of nicely in the skin. Okay, so color matching foundation. It's everyone's worst nightmare. And it's probably the most common question I get asked. Um, I've always learned through the years um, that most people's face is a different color um, to their neck and their chest. So if they've got pigmentation, redness, anything like that. So a little trick that I've learned is to match to the chest. Um, so what I do is I usually take two swatches of different colors. Again, you want to do this in daylight because that's really the most truest light to see what it's going to look like. And you can see with both of these, the one that kind of disappears is the right shade for you. Um, what I'll do then is do the face and then slowly work it down to the neck and then she'll be one color. There's a couple of ways you can put foundation on. You can use your fingers or you can use a brush. Um, I personally like using a brush and then using my fingers to kind of work it into the skin. Uh, the whole point with foundation is just to kind of even out any skin tone and it's not to be a mask, it's not to cover up all your flaws, it's just to even out the skin. I always like to start on the inside, around the nose, that's usually where people kind of have pores, things that need more covering up, on the chin and a bit on the forehead and then what I do is small circular motions and this brush is really good for this because it's uh, it's really soft and it's got a lot of kind of density with the bristles but because it's fanned out it kind of does the work for you with the blending and that's what you want and you can see on the side yeah if you start there and you've got thin layers you can see that there's no kind of difference in color which is the most important because we've all suffered from that crime of having the dreaded foundation line. But if you match to the chest and the neck, then it's all going to be one color. So yeah, the foundation color that I'm using on Savannah is sand. And um, I really love the finish of this because the skin still looks true. It doesn't look like you're wearing anything. But as you can see, it's kind of evened her out which is really what you want. And then I lightly put down the neck. There's only like residue left on there. Don't make the mistake of putting it all on your brush and then going down your neck because it will transfer on your clothes. But if you've buffed in the skin and then just with the residue, just go down the neck. Another thing, you always see makeup artists with uh, foundation on their hands or whatever makeup on their hands. It's better off being on your hand and you can really transfer it into the brush rather than pumping it straight into the brush and then you're left with um, a lot of foundation on your face. So you always want to control the amount you have. A little good tip, if you're wearing your hair up, it's also good to just do your ears just with the residue that's left in there. So everything's got a kind of uniformity with it. And this is when I like to take my fingers and the warmth of fingers will kind of work it into the skin. So if you have any areas that you need covering for extra coverage, you can use a concealer the same color as the skin, which I'm going to do now. So I'm using this concealer pa palette and it's got all different colors, which is what you want. If you have to, if you're going to be concealing any blemishes, pigmentation, anything like that, you really want a few different tones because your skin's different tones, so you can mix it up a bit. So I'm using a little bit of the silicon primer that I've got on my hand and I'm just going to mix it with a concealer and this is just going to thin it out a little bit and I'm just going in and I'm just kind of photoshopping little marks out the way any kind of redness anything like that again this is great even if you've got if you suffer from acne bad skin pigmentation you really better using a medium to light kind of coverage and then going back and using something thicker um, on the problem areas and that way it just looks more natural. 
you can probably notice that I'm not going under her eyes yet because this concealer I'm using as, as a corrective concealer to just cover any flaws. I'll be using something a bit thinner underneath her eyes. And then you can use your finger to kind of tap, tap the concealer in and really work it into the skin. Again, it's just building it up. I also find that most women suffer from a bit of redness around the nose area, so you always want to make sure that's covered up. And then just use your fingers to kind of blend it in. And a bit on the chin. Okay, look at me. So you want to go back and remember when you do your makeup, it's always best to do it in daylight. Um, obviously when you're going on a night out, um, you're going to be using normal lights in the house, but that doesn't matter because you're going to be seeing with artificial light. But when you're out in the day, obviously you want your makeup to be the same color, so you need to really do it in the daylight. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, some highlighting. And it's very subtle, it's almost like it gives your skin a bit of a glow. It's not about having like this iridescent, shiny, shiny skin. It's more about having a kind of glow. So I'm just going to uh, start on the highlighting once I've covered everything. Okay. So the concealer palette that I'm using is um, warm and uh, like I said there's a whole mix of colours here so it's really good to kind of use a few of the different colours to, uh, to kind of take out any kind of blemishes. So if we start on highlighter now, highlighter you always want it to kind of be part of the skin, you don't want it to look kind of really iridescent or almost not real. So I'm going to be taking the studio brush as the foundation brush, but it's, it's really good for cream products because it's a synthetic brush. So I'm going to be taking from the shimmer palette, I'm going to be mixing the kind of pale neutral one with a bit of the gold and I'm going to really be adding it onto the top part of the cheekbones and that's really where you want to highlight. So if you turn to the side and you can see I also like to bring a bit up there to the brow bone. Again you can use your fingers if you like. Um, I usually take my finger and just kind of melt it into the skin. It always helps having the warmth of your fingertips just taking any edges off. I think the whole key to really good makeup is when you can't see any lines or any edges, it just looks kind of flawless. So if we turn to that side, again just to the tops of the cheek there. And then I like to do, I'm sure you've all heard of by now, down the bridge of the nose. And this is just bringing out all the key parts of your face and then the cupid's bow which is the top part of your lip and it helps for fullness and it uh, just gives a lovely kind of dimension to the face. Okay, so that's the highlighting. Very subtle, very natural. You know, if you're going out, you can always put more on, um, but for the day, this is enough. Okay, so next thing is I'm going to do some under eye concealing and I'm probably going to do a mix of the eye under concealer and the highlighter. So I'll just take a little bit of this one. And then also the highlighter, I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my hand and then I can gauge how much of the highlighter I want. Obviously I don't want it to look like artificial light coming from under her eye. You want it to look natural, you just want it to grab the light ever so slightly. These are really great for under the eye because they're really thin and they got a really good consistency to them. 
so the brush that I'm using is a Studio One and it says an eyeshadow brush but just because it says you can use it for certain things it doesn't mean you're restricted so I often use different brushes for different things, um, multi-purpose brushes. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and look up and I'm just putting it where she needs it. So I'm not going through the whole eye area underneath and just lightening that because that would make the lighter part lighter so that would never be even. So by lightening this part here, it's making it the same kind of tone as the rest and gives that more natural finish. Again, you just take your finger and you kind of blend it in. Everything's kind of layering it on. I also like to go in the inside and that just lightens it up. You'll also find that most people you have a bit of scarring here from you know when you've rubbed your eyes so it's always a good idea with concealer just to cover that up. Look up. So just going down again just use my finger to blend it, melt it into the skin. You see you've got no kind of color difference here, it just looks highlighted underneath in a natural way. We will probably be doing videos on all different ages, mature skin, um, problem skin, but uh, this is just to show you where you need to put things and what kind of products you need to use. So once that's done, I can have a look and see what else needs to be covered. I always like to go inside a little bit just to open the eyes up. And I'm not really going on the eyelid because um, it can cause creasing when you do your shadow. I also have to say that if you are going to do a strong eye look, it's best to skip the concealer, do your eyes, and then do your concealer after you've done your eyes. And it just saves you time and saves you having to reapply, reapply, reapply. And then before you know it, you've got loads of concealer on. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is contouring. And this is really about getting the best structure in your face. And I'm going to be using the same brush I did with my highlighter, obviously try and get most of the product out there. Now this is um, a concealer palette um, for darker skin, but what's great about it is that you can use it as um, a cream bronzer basically to just get some structure in the face. Again, because this is daylight, you really want to be <laughs> really subtle with it. So when you're looking into where you want to kind of contour and get that beautiful kind of almost like sunken in cheekbones there, you want to just feel where the hollows of the cheeks are. So you would always feel that's a high point and that's below. So I'm just taking this and working it into the brush. You can see it's on the hand just to warm the product up. And then I'm just going to be ever so slightly working it into the skin there. And you can use, obviously, powder bronzer. That would do the same thing you can contour with that. But you've got to use the same textures. So for instance, I've used the foundation, the concealer. They're all creamy products. So when I'm using the creamy concealer now, it's not going on a powdery surface. Because if it did, that's when you kind of get that cakiness. So if you wanted to use a powder bronzer, it would be better off putting a light veil of translucent powder and then going in with your powder bronzer. But I've always loved cream bronzers. I think they give a really natural finish. And again, we're just going to go through there. Really lightly, hardly touching the skin. And it's great in the temples just to give a bit of shape there. and then lightly on the jawline. What's good is if you have your foundation brush that you used earlier, that's going to have a bit of residue on it and then that's great for kind of buffing the skin. So you can't see any lines, but you can see there's some kind of 
dimension there. Another trick is to go down the bridge of the nose, but this I would really say for people, if you're new to doing any kind of contouring, um, just be very kind of light-handed. You don't always have to do this. This is great if you're going out at night because you can get away with it a little bit more. Um, where in the daylight it might just be a bit obvious that you've got kind of brown going on the side of your nose. But it just gives lovely structure. Okay, so I'm starting now. Um, I've used all cream products and so now I just want to set it. Um, if you've got dry skin, you don't have to do this. If you find that you get oily down the T-zone, it's always a good idea. Um, I always find it's easier and it lasts longer if you kind of set it with a powder. Um, this HD powder from the ALF Studio is really finely milled, so it, uh, you can't see that it's powdery. It just kind of takes that, that instant shine away, but you can still, because you've put highlighter on, you're still in control of having that kind of dewiness, but it's not everywhere. You're kind of controlling where it's going to be, and also you want longevity with your makeup. Once it's on, you don't want to keep on applying it, so I always find that powder really helps out. And you can see that the brush that I'm using is a blush brush. Again, this I use for um, powder, I'd use it for contouring with bronzer. So just because it says what you should use it for, remember don't feel restricted in how you can use it. I'm kind of putting a bit of powder in there and then I tap it out because I really just want the residue. I just want to take that faint kind of shine away, but I still want to keep it quite dewy. Okay, so that's done there. Now, because I'm going to be using a powder blusher, this really helps it to kind of glide through. If I went straight onto foundation, which is, can be quite tacky with a powdery, bron uh, powdery blusher, it would just kind of streak. So with using the HD powder, it's giving it almost a veil just to sweep over so you get that kind of buffed look in. So now I'm going to use the same brush. And the color that I'm using is Tickle Pink in the studio. Again, I'm putting it in the product and then I'm kind of patting it out because this is going to give me control. So a lot of people confuse where they should put blusher. Um, if you smile, you can see just the way you kind of apples of your cheeks are. That's a really good guideline. But that doesn't mean to say you're going to have big circles here. It's just where you're going to start out and you're just going to buff it away. So. You just want to use really light strokes. And again, I'm just kind of starting in the inside and working my way out, but so that it doesn't look like you can see where it starts, where it begins. It's just blending all the way through. Again, you can go as strong as you like. I mean, blush always looks ni nicer when it looks soft and it doesn't look like you've uh, put too much on. I'm just taking a clean brush now and I'm just kind of buffing that away. With makeup, remember, you can use brushes to just take the edge off anything. So that's the blusher done. And now we're going to use brows. Okay, so I'm using the eyebrow kit. It's really good because you've got the wax and then the powder. Um, Savannah's really got good brows. So I usually find with most women that we all seem to go a bit thinner or a bit sparse near the ends. So that's really where you want to fill in. And I'm not a big fan of doing a big block and then a huge painted in brow. I think you can just fill it in in the ends and then kind of slowly with the residue come in there. So if I show you, I'm going to take the angle brush. This brush is really good for doing gel liner, um, for going on the top of your lash line. And because um, it's at an angle, it's great for doing brows. So tap it out and then you're slightly going to just fill in 
where you need to. I'm just going to mix it in with another brow color because I always find it's good to have a couple of tones to kind of make it more realistic as well. You're filling it in because it gives it more of a two-dimensional feel with that. And then I'm slowly just coming through here, making a straight line, and then taking most of water and then just kind of brushing it up. And you can get a Q-tip and you can just use it for any correctional. These will be your new best friend when doing makeup because it helps to just buffer anything out. And then just do the other side. Again, it's always better starting at the end part at the end and then working your way in. Because that's really where most people need the kind of filling. Everyone's different, but generally that's where you want to fill in. And then just with the residue that's left on there, I'm just gonna have a straight line. And then just slightly brushing it up. Again, you want to do this when you're facing straight on into the mirror because then you can gauge. They don't have to be exact. They've got to look like they're same from the same family, but uh, they don't have to look like twins because our face isn't symmetrical on both sides. Can you look up for me? And now you're ready to do anything you want with your eyes. You can do a really light look and nude lips, or if you're going out a stronger eye, you can put more shimmer. But that is the basic of when you want to do your makeup every day. Mm -hmm.